Hello, and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here, and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. And I am joined, as always, and I will never break up with my favorite reader, Claire. Yes, that's right. Today, we are doing uh, an anti-Valentine's Day special, that's which right. is books we broke up with. So I'm Claire. I moderate the historical fiction group on Facebook, and as the page turns on... That's here at the library. <laughs> On in person. <laughs> On in person. <laughs> Absolutely. So like Claire said, today we're going to be talking about books we broke up with, our anti-Valentine, but it's still a Valentine's to reading because look, life is too short to read books that you're not enjoying. Right. Right? And sometimes it's just not the right time. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I would say for myself, like the number one reason that I break up with a book is boredom. Like if I'm reading a book and it's just not holding my attention or I find that I'm like doing anything else but reading, like I'm scrolling endlessly on my phone for an hour and my book is right next to me and I haven't picked it up, it's probably a sign that I just should let that one go. Right. It's not for you. It's not for me. We can sing, let it go. We can. Yeah. And, you know, so we've each got a stack of books that we have broken up with. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not good books. Like, at least a couple of these were highly recommended. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> we'll see if, if the people who recommended them are watching. Don't be offended also if we're talking about a book that you really enjoyed, because that's the whole point of this is not every book is for every person, right? That's right. So, yeah. Do you want to kick us off, Claire? Sure. I'm going to kick us off with one that my book club voted on. It was Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabrielle Garcia Marquez, mm -hmm. which pretty highly regarded book for it's me to be yeah, yeah talking about this this way mm -hmm. um, but the funniest thing is this is I'm gonna have a true confession here the only book club book that I didn't finish and most of That's my big. book club also just about wanted to stone me for the choice of this book <laughs> um, so one of the funniest things I read on Goodreads is someone said just finished this, and I don't understand what's so special about it. Can anyone explain? And this person <laughs> says, no, if you don't feel it, it's not worth explaining. Not all books are for everybody. And that's just so true. Mm -hmm. So the thing that cracked me up about this one is it's one of those books that people are like, oh, this is the greatest love story of all time. And, and this is about a man who... <laughs> got ceremoniously dumped, I believe, early on in his life, and then went on to sleep with about 600 and some people, but claimed he was, like, in madly in love with this woman. So um, this was another funny thing I cannot take credit for, but somewhat spoiler alert, but not really. You cannot declare yourself a virgin just because you didn't love the hundreds of people you had sex with before your one true love. <laughs> So, yes, that about sums up Love in the Time of Cholera. That is amazing. Isn't it, though? It is. Yeah. That's great. I like it. Well, speaking of um, great love stories, so the first one that I'm going to talk about is a retelling of what some might say is the greatest love story of all time. Oh, are so we I've talking got Romeo and Juliet? These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This was even, I think... Um, if it wasn't on my stack of shame last year, it was certainly one of my books that I was looking forward to. I think so. <sighs> so it's a teen. It's a retelling of Romeo and Juliet set in 1920s Shanghai plus monsters. So it sounds like... Amazing. It sounds amazing. The cover... Glorious. Is stunning. Yeah. <sighs> this book was such a slog. <laughs> I got like... I don't even know, more than 100 pages into it. And I just, I didn't care about any of the characters. And the mystery part of it, like the monstery part of it, was not moving fast enough. Yeah. And I just realized, like, I could be grumpy and slog my way through the other, oh, 350 pages that were left in the book. Or I could just let it go. Yeah. What's, do you have a rule, like 50 pages, 100 pages? I don't, um, 
That's a great question. I don't have a rule. Um, it's usually either like I just realize I have gotten super bored and mm-hmm. like I'm dreading trying to get through the rest of the book. Or sometimes it's like something has happened in the book and I'm like, nope. Yeah. Done. I'm not having it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, my next one. I think you and I both love a, a nice gritty memoir. I'm thinking Educated, Glass Castles. Absolutely. So I was thinking that this book called Heartland by Sarah Smarsh. Mm. Um, I remember buying that book. Yeah. yeah. And it's a pretty popular book. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, um, the other book it was compared to was Nickel and Dimed mm-hmm. in America. So you're thinking this hard scrabble life of this Kansas girl, um, I was really looking forward to it. And then the weird thing is, is the way this one is written. I just couldn't buy into it. And Mm. she wrote it to her supposed daughter of the future. So it was a very odd tense. And I I couldn't get like, or a daughter she had in the past. I I don't know. It just, it bugged me. (laughs) And once it starts bugging me from Mm -hmm. the get go, I, I usually just can't get around it. And the other thing is she would start talking about people and then they would poof, just drop off the face of the earth like, you know, these Mm -hmm. relationships. So I don't know. Um, I'd be interested to hear if other people read this and liked it because I would think about giving it a second shot. Okay. If some other readers that have my similar taste. Mm -hmm. Did you read this one? I did not. Okay. No, I thought it looked really interesting when I bought it. A memoir of working hard and being broke in the richest country on earth because... Mm -hmm. That applies to a lot of people. Yeah. You and know. didn't didn't that author, doesn't she have a new one out? That name sounds so familiar. I did read her new one. She had a Dolly Parton book out. That's what it was. Yeah. And yeah. you know how I am about Dolly. I do. Yeah. Just, I do. That one I did finish. I remember. It was not my favorite <laughs> Dolly Parton. I prefer her own bi- mm-hmm. biography, but um, I did finish that one. Okay. This one I, I did not. Yeah. So here's another um, widely well-regarded book that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <sighs> Pachinko yeah. by Min Jin Lee. So National Book Award winner, or finalist, rather. Um, there's a blurb on the cover by Juno Diaz, who, regardless of what you think of him as a person, is a really good writer. So this is a um, generational story set in Korea during the occupation by Japan. Um, or at least that's where it starts. And uh, I listened to this one on audio. And this is one where I might need to give it a second chance because I wonder if the audio just wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes it can take you out of the story. Um, but I got, I don't know, a quarter, a third of the way through. And it's a long book. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, and and this might be the audio. I was having a little bit of trouble, like, keeping the names straight Mm -hmm. and, like, who was who. And I just, like, I just didn't, I just didn't care. Yeah. (laughs) It's funny. I think um, my daughter, Sarah, got that as an extra for Book of the Month and kind Mm -hmm. of felt the same way. Oh, interesting. I think she finished it. Okay. But I have friends that love that book. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. So... Yeah. I know it's shown up on, um, like, staff pick shelves here mm-hmm. at the library. Yeah. Like, I haven't read it either, so. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> Going to get a lot of that today, folks. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You didn't exactly want to make I, me want to pick that thing up, because well, I think I remember when you first yeah. tried. Yeah. Eh. Oh, well. <laughs> there are so many other family sagas. Yeah. So Absolutely. We'll dive into one of those. Mm-hmm. All right, my next one. This was a real shockeroo. Learning to speak Southern. I mean, does that just mm-hmm. not have Claire written all over it? It does. Yeah, well, Claire hated that book. <laughs> um, threw it down. The implausibility meter mm. for Claire was like woof, woof, off the charts. Um, just, you know, <laughs> dysfunctional family with a capital D. Mm. Um, and I just didn't, I didn't like the main character. Mm-hmm. She got on my nerves so bad. I was just like, why are you continuing to make these stupid, idiotic choices? She, like, decided to run away from her life, so she's traveling around, you know. I, I don't know. She just, she bugged, bugged me. Bugged me really bad. Yeah. Um, so, 
Yeah, between that, it was supposed to be like a mother-daughter relationship. I think her mother died, though, before she got home. And it was like, what was the point? What was the point? You know, yeah. Yeah. And then there was a really big bad reveal at the end, which I'm not even going to go into in case someone does want to pick this book up so and read wait, it. So did you finish that one or no, did you No, I did spoil not finish yourself? it. I spoiled it. <laughs> I, I, I was like, okay, is this as bad as I think it's going to be? So mm-hmm. I read like the last chapter was like worse, worse than I thought it was going to oh, be. No. Yeah. Put it down. Oh, Put it no. down, Claire. All right. Moving along. Yeah. So the other time that I break up with a book is when... I'm like undecided and I'm reading along and something happens that just makes me want to throw the book across the room. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's this one. (laughs) So this is um, In Every Mirror She's Black by Lola Akinmade Akerstrom. And this is like a a multi-narrative book about three black women. um, I think, let's see. It's been a minute. Um, at least one is from the U.S., one is a Somali refugee, um, and I don't remember who the third person is, but they all end up in Sweden. So that's interesting, right, is like the black experience, the black American experience, the refugee experience in a Nordic country, mm-hmm. which is, you know, not a story that I have seen happen often, right? Um, so I was like, okay, well, this is going to be really interesting. And, like, the that part of it was very interesting, like seeing these differing experiences. Um, But I got to a part, how, how spoilery should we get? Oh, just go for it. Okay. So one of the narratives, um, there's like a, um, there's a woman who has more or less a chance meeting with this like high flying Swedish executive. And he basically starts stalking her. She's got a boyfriend. He's like, sending her flowers, like, doing all this stuff. He shows up at her house Hmm. uninvited, like, after she has rebuffed him numerous times. And she's like, oh, but come in. It's so romantic. And let's, like... Instead of call the police. Yes! Yeah, okay. And I was like, "Mm, no, pass. Yeah. Pass. No rewards for stalking. No. (laughs) It's not romantic. It's Oh, totally not romantic. (laughs) Not only not romantic, just unsafe, people. Mm -hmm. Unsafe. Absolutely. So. I don't care how much money he's got. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. I think I'm going to be contacted by the South American Writers Association (laughs) because my next one was The Inheritance of Orcada Divina Divina. Divina by Zoreda Cordova. And this one... Talk about a gorgeous cover. It is. It's beautiful. It's totally beautiful. My daughter really liked it. This was one of our mother-daughter book Mm -hmm. clubs. And normally she picks some really good ones. And it's just like, I'm glad I'm out of my Mm -hmm. comfort zone. But you can can see where Mm. I just, I threw on the towel. Mm -hmm. And I haven't picked it up since. Midway through. I mean, that's that's further than I normally, 158 pages. Yeah, that's like half. Yeah. It's halfway through that book. But I think what happened is... I couldn't read it. I think this is one of those books that you really just need to sit down, read, and really concentrate on. Mm. Because the author starts out, and the the matriarch of this family is dying. And she summons in, like, all the children, grandchildren, mm-hmm. like, you know, for their inheritance. And there are just, there were so many characters, and there's magic and everything. And mm-hmm. I just started getting lost in all these different stories. So I couldn't really attach or feel strongly about any one person. Mm -hmm. So as a result, I just started not to care, you know, because I I just couldn't figure out what to care about. And um, sometimes you have to be in the mood for magical realism. Yeah. And and a lot of times I love it if it's well done. And this, you know, was very beautifully written. Like Mm -hmm. you could imagine seeing things like, you know, I think she was turning into a tree. You know, and just the way they described it and everything, that sounded really cool. But there was just too many people, and I kept putting it back and forth and then not remembering who was who or what I was Mm -hmm. reading about, and eventually I I just stopped. And there were also, like, forward and backward timelines, and that's another thing that bugs me sometimes is I get real attached to one storyline. Yeah. And then when I'm reading the other one, I'm like, but I don't care about you. Right. You're just like skimming just, the pages just to get, get to the other one. Just get out of here, you know? <laughs> just get back 
back to the story I want to read about. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I might try to redo that one just because mm -hmm. my daughter liked it. And I, I feel guilt, mother guilt for yeah. abandoning the mother daughter book. But, <laughs> you know, we're always ordering. So there you go. No worries. There's always another mother yeah. daughter book. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. My next one. <laughs> I didn't even make it past the, like, author's note at the beginning. <laughs> I didn't make it past the introduction of this book. And that is Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. And let me tell you, um, I loved The Tipping Point mm -hmm. and Blink. Yeah. Loved them. I thought they were, they were great books. This one, so the subtitle of this book is What We Should Know About the People We Don't Know. And the whole premise is, like, um, misunderstandings, basically, when you're talking to people that you don't know, mm -hmm. when you're talking to strangers, um, which seems fascinating. I don't like talking to strangers. So I was like, maybe I can actually like take something out of this. Um, so there's like the Malcolm Gladwell, like pop psychology bit mm -hmm. that he does. Right. And then there are case studies. And I got to the part where um, he was lining up some of the case studies that were going to be in the book. Um, and one of them, one of them was um, the Chanel Miller assault, the oh. Brock Turner assault yeah. at Stanford, which y'all may or may not remember. I read her memoir right. um, a year or so ago and loved. And I was like, <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, assaulting someone who is blackout drunk... Is not a communication misunderstanding. No. First of all. No. And then the next one, like the next breath is the Jerry Sandusky case at Penn State. I was like, also, also like institutionalized pedophilia and assault. Oh. Not a misunderstanding. Yeah. No, it's so, not much to misunderstand. Yeah. And at that point, I knew that like, even if there was some kernel of wisdom to take from it, I was not going to be in the right frame of mind. No, not when to you're, take anything not from when it. You're like raging mad, right? So I got to the I I borrowed this one in audio from Libby. I got to the end of the author's note, and I was like, "Boop, return early." <laughs> not gonna do it. Yeah, not gonna do it. It's funny because I think my son might have bought that book because mm. he liked The Tipping Point. Yeah. He had to read it at, uh, at school. Mm -hmm. Me too. So I, But I never heard from him. So I wonder if he also did yeah. the same. Hmm. Yeah. I'll have to investigate that. Yeah. All right. So my next one. I'm feeling great shame. <laughs> Tons of all oh, the shame. Eh. It was Colson Whitehead, Harlem Shuffle. Mm -hmm. And I loved, loved the book... Um, Oh gosh, Nickel Boys. Yes, that and we this read. Is so different. It's very different, <laughs> and um, I even got it as an advanced reader copy. I mm. was like dancing. Oh yeah, I got approved. <laughs> I get to read it early, and I I bagged out on it. I was just like, oh, Colson, I'm not getting this. Mm -hmm. I'm just not getting the vibe. It's it's like a satirical comedy about like a a thief in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and once again, I just wasn't grabbed by the characters. Mm -hmm. I, it just wasn't easy to follow. And I got about halfway through and I, I just bailed, you know. And the funny thing is, is this one of my good friends from Virginia that also reads a lot, mm -hmm. she she messaged me not even knowing about that I had the advance. She goes, I have that new Carlson Whitehead book. And I'm thinking about bailing, but I don't know why. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I bailed. <laughs> nope, no shame. Bail. Go do what you want. But mm -hmm. she stuck with it mm -hmm. and said she really liked it in the end. Yeah, so I read that one, like, towards the end of the year. Um, it was probably going to show up in one of these book breaks sometime soon. Yeah. Um, and it took me a while to kind of sort through what I thought about it. Like, mm -hmm. it definitely didn't move in the same way that Nickel Boys or Underground Railroad moved because it wasn't, I think... It's not really about the plot. Right. It's a character study mm -hmm. of the main character, but then also I think of Harlem in that time period. And I think 
I'm just not the target audience. Right. Yeah. So I And the man won it. two Pulitzer Prizes in a row. So you know what? If, I know. You know, I didn't like this one as much. Well. Though he didn't get the Pulitzer for this one. No, he didn't. Just saying. Yeah. Well. So, uh, you know, yeah. I liked it. It wasn't my favorite of his that I've mm-hmm. read. Yeah. Um, he has apparently in his back catalog a zombie book. Yes, he has. He has a pretty eclectic catalog. Yeah. I saw him interviewed once, and he's mm-hmm. a very interesting person. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was another one that David had to read in school. I the think zombie was, one? No. Oh. Sag Harbor. <laughs> okay. I think, yeah. Was the one he had to read. Yeah. yeah. So I might go back and and try some of his others. I think that the two, I think Nickel Boys and Underground Railroad very much like tied into the zeitgeist of the times when they came out Mm -hmm. and I think that's part of why they were so popular um but I I think he's still a a good writer oh definitely you know yeah it's just this one wasn't just didn't hit quite the same way yeah yeah so Mm -hmm. nice well my last one um was definitely on my like books I was looking forward to from last year. Um, it is Dark Horses by Susan Mihalik. Um, and this one, <laughs> so you all may remember, not this past year, but the year before, one of my favorite books of the entire year was My Dark Vanessa, mm-hmm. uh, which was stunning, like just blew me away, even though it was very difficult subject matter. So this book is um, a 15-year-old equestrian prodigy and, like, bad stuff going on at home. And I thought I was picking up, like, My Dark Vanessa plus horses, but what I was really picking up was Flowers in the Attic plus horses. Oh, okay. And that was not what I signed up for. Right. (laughs) It wasn't what I was looking for. So I started getting kind of, like, squiggy vibes and then I got to like one particular scene and I was like you know what this is this is not the book I need in my life yeah (laughs) I don't I don't need flowers in in my attic (laughs) no and and like you said there was there's books that can handle that subject matter Mm -hmm. without making you feel like a voyeur Mm -hmm. like they they kind of go into it but there's that separation so Mm -hmm. and this this one felt um a little lurid yeah yeah and I, no thank you yeah it was not not what I needed in my before bedtime reading no <laughs> that was another one I got the art because you had said oh. that you wanted that and I never yeah. even picked it up so well, I I don't think you missed much no okay <laughs> <laughs> well there we have our books that yeah. we've uh broken up with have you all woken up with any books and want to share titles that things that didn't work for you and make Kirsten and I feel better about ourselves Absolutely. please put them in the comments yeah well yeah. and like we said like um Harlem Shuffle is a great example like right. not everybody has the same reaction to a book yeah so there may be books that we've talked about that you guys absolutely loved and maybe you broke up with a book recently that one of us <laughs> absolutely loved and that's you know why the library is full of all of the books. That's right. So, yeah. But yeah, let us know um, what you've broken up with. If you have rules about why you break up with a book or when you break up with a book, I'm always interested to hear that too. People sort of yeah. reading strategies. Yes. Um, I know people who never break up with a book. Right. Some people feel like they can't stop. I'm yeah. so glad I'm not one of those people. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think. The, the ones that I slog through are either for, um, like, a reading challenge <laughs> right. have to check something off or book club. Right. Um, there, have been a, there have been a few singers from book club. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. We Otherwise, can't always pick good ones. I know. So. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, let us know in the comments what you've broken up with or what you think about the books that we broke up with. And we will be back in the beginning of March. Um, And I'm not sure if we have a theme yet for that one, but one way or the other, we'll be back with some new books to talk about in March. As always. As always. (laughs) Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.